Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another thunderous episode of Hammer Away on the Go Game Go channel. Prepare yourselves tonight for a chat with bassist Timothy Gaines. So here we go. Let us see. Are we there? Where are we? We are right hey. here. How's it going, man? What's up? Oh, plenty. Plenty. Uh, we've had a chance to talk recently, but, you know, it's yeah. it, it was a while between. So lots of yeah. lots of things are happening and uh we have lots of cool stuff uh we're gonna talk about tonight i hope i hope you think the same i agree <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so what do we have in the background there in the background oh yeah yeah well, it's uh can you see i don't yeah know we can I'm on the camera here but uh, yeah i know it's weird right brown base that's my uh that's my, uh, it's, it's a mutt base. It's a, it's a yeah. uh, stingray neck, 70, 79 fretless neck. Mm. And it's a seventies, late seventies jazz body that I, I've been playing that thing forever. Used to have uh -huh. a 73 jazz neck on it fretted. And then that neck busted. And, uh, <laughs> I got, I got a friend of mine who used to work for music man, uh, oh. in GNL. And uh, he had that neck. It was a reject. And we traded for a, uh, I think, a camera tripod <laughs> years, and years ago. So I got the neck. We put it on this on this jazz body. And I've been playing oh, yeah. since the, the early 90s. Still has the original strings that I put on there in like 90. Are you kidding? Yeah. So I, I don't change the strings. And then the other, let's see, which way am I going here? Yeah, there uh, you go. The other, that's... Uh, a new uh, jazz bass that I've been playing. Oh wow! Um, I like Fender jazz basses. Uh, yeah, the oddly bass enough, that, that's my Telecaster in the corner over there. Yes. And uh, and then if you go down, I can't see. I got a P bass. I can't see him. P bass. Oh, there you a, go. A Stingray. The Stingray I've had since yeah. uh, since I was a kid. That was the first bass really? I bought brand new. Really? So, oh man! That, it's a '78. I've had it since I think. I bought it in 79. Wow. Well, th Anyways. that makes me happy that I didn't ask that question in the lightning round. Oftentimes I do. I'm like, what's the first instrument you bought and do you still have it? So, <laughs> so that's like the third, I think third or fourth that I still have, but that I, that I got when I was a kid. Wow. Uh, the first bass was in Orlando, which is Japanese, uh, uh, P bass copy. And, uh, I got that in, uh, I got that for my 14th birthday from my mom. Wow. And then I got rid of that and I got one of those Ibanez uh, Rickenbacker lawsuit copies. Oh. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got rid of that and I had a, a 65 jazz bass, which at the time mm. that I had it was, you know, it was the mid 70s, late 70s. Right. And, uh, I don't know, it was only 10 years old at the time, so it wasn't like that. It was like <laughs> a Mexican jazz bass, you know, here from the, from the 80s and the 90s. You know, it's not yeah. worth that much, but, you know, so I traded that in on a BC, on a BC Rich, and uh, I think it was uh, it was the son of Rich, which was a Japanese uh, BC Rich. That, that, those came out in, like, the early 80s, late 70s. Wow. And then from there I bought the, the Stingray. So, and Man. the stingray I still have. The others I don't. Wow, that's that is a great little walk. That's amazing. Oh, hey, there you go. Rich G says, "Tim, Rich G, Rich Gardner, yeah. hey, Rich, what's up?" <laughs> hey, I like how you put that together. That's pretty good. I'm like Rich G. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, we start every show with a lightning round. So these are summer, summer. Cool little questions. They're all cool little questions, but some of them are a little quirky. Okay. Um, but we'll start with this one. Would you have rather written Back in Black or Stan Alive? Stan Alive. And why? I mean, we kind of know why to a certain well, extent, but. Well, I, I like that era of music. So yeah, uh, I was, as a bass player, I was into the, uh, Especially starting out as a kid, you know, that's mm -hmm. right around the time that disco was, uh, you know, it was big. And yeah. as a bass player, I mean, that's what 
that's what I was into at the time. Well, and let's face it, the bass players are the, they were the ones that got to move around. Yeah. The only, <laughs> the, only the only people that could move around more were the vocalists, really. I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, guitar players yeah. were kind of stuck in that chicka chicka thing and yeah. drummers are definitely just solid. Keep it. Back in Black was cool. I, I mean, that was like the first, maybe in the second ACDC album I ever owned. Mm. And, uh, Same here. I dug it. And uh, the first one was Dirty Deeds. Ah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> went from there to <laughs> Back in Black. So. <laughs> skipped, skipped right over Highway to Hell. <laughs> yeah, skipped over everything else. <laughs> <laughs> So what was so speaking of albums, what was your first album, vinyl, first or vinyl whatever? That I ever bought was uh, Partridge Family Up to Date. It was like Shut 19, your mouth. Nineteen seventy-one or seventy, somewhere in there. I still have it. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got the first album back here. Yeah. Uh, so I, you know, and I had. Uh, I have two older sisters and they have, uh, you know, a huge uh, library of music. So I grew up listening yeah. to everything and, you know, as well as my parents, but, you know, as a nine-year-old, eight, nine-year-old kid, 10-year-old kid, I, I bought uh, Partridge Family because that's what was on TV at the time. Yeah. And it was great harmonies. And, and those songs were played by brilliant musicians. It's all of these, all of these movies that we're yeah. getting to watch now about the documentaries of these people that actually played all this music. Yeah, the Wrecking Crew. Uh, yeah. Gosh, all the all the great players. I mean, my my favorite bass player at the time was Danny Partridge, who <laughs> <laughs> who wasn't Danny Partridge <laughs> on, on the record, but I mean, who knew? Yeah, Max Bennett on bass. I mean, is one of the great jazz players. Uh, uh, Joe Osborne. Uh, all these guys that. That were behind the scenes, Larry Nectel, yeah. uh, and all these guys played that were, yeah. uh, you know, who knew that yeah. it wasn't Danny? Yeah, <laughs> on his ovation base. <laughs> <laughs> you, what did he say? You you pluck it, you don't strum it. Mm -hmm. Is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, anyways, that was it. And then, uh, you know, early That's... on, it was uh, Elton John from like seventy. 273 on it was yeah. like all yeah. through the 70s i was into elton john and his bass player was yeah. d murray and that's yeah. how i got into playing bass was because i listened to his rhythm section absolutely <laughs> manuel martin martinez is here wash hands that's so right. uh so uh yeah we i remember uh i think I, I always i'll say it now and again kiss was my first kiss alive was my first record but my parents, you know, my mother bought records. We were really a big musical family, so we, yeah. we dug it all. All right, number three, science fiction or fantasy? Hmm, I, probably fantasy. Yeah? yeah. Do, you, do you read much? I do. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly uh, Christian literature, but I, I, mm -hmm. I do read... Uh, I, I got it. You can't see everything here, but I mean, yeah. I got a library behind me. I got yeah. acts of books right here next to me. This is like what I've been working <laughs> on. Here. So it's like I read, I, I go to bed reading, uh, I wake up in the morning reading. So that's what nice. I do. Right now. Yeah, it keeps the mind expanded, right? Yeah. Keeps absolutely. it fresh. Now, here's one for you. If you were a pro wrestler, what would your intro song be? That's a interesting question so because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know anybody can be a pro wrestler yeah especially somebody as large as i am uh, <laughs> you are tall and wiry you could uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah who knows yeah the uh, uh, unskinny bop from uh <laughs> 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 oh man and the last lightning round question tonight what album do you appreciate more now than when it was released if you have a couple that's fine i'm not going to tie you down to one you know if, if a couple of them come to mind there's a lot of them but i i 
still say one of my my top favorites is uh goodbye yellow brick road from elton john mm. uh, 73 that that album yeah. is uh is timeless mm -hmm. and as i go back and you know play songs that i used to play when i was a kid uh, uh that's one that comes up frequently and it's a hard there's some songs on there that are pretty hard to, yeah. to master on the bass so yeah yeah yeah, they, there are some brilliant songs on there. Um, I have a friend of mine, and we'll get into this a little bit later with you, um, But uh, and I'll say this ahead of time, knowing what I'll talk to you about, but I have a friend of mine that has uh, Dogs of Society as a Elton John tribute band here in town, mm -hmm. and uh, they do uh, Gray Seal. They do, uh, of course, they have the funeral for a friend, and... Um, uh, the subsequent song, Love yeah. Lies Bleeding. Love it's just such a, such a great record. Yeah, I never thought about that one when I was a kid. I never owned it when I was a kid. Yeah, well, you go back yeah. and, and listen to all the stuff that, mm -hmm. that Dee Murray played. Dee and Nigel, Nigel Olson, drummer. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, what, a, what an excellent rhythm section those guys oh. were. What a monster player. Yeah, they locked in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and further on from... Manuel, we have my favorite bass player. Great, play, great playing style. And uh, for Blake, we may talk about this a little bit. Okay, now I'm seeing these guys coming up here. So, yeah, there yeah. we go, Manuel. There, there it is. What's up, brother? Yeah, yeah, a great playing style. You are right, my friend. You are right. Well, now we'll get uh, we'll get started. We. Um, just i guess i'll just ask how's how's life out there in arizona today is how's the weather out there is it is it hot it's flipping hot it's, <laughs> in fact we're we're having a a heat wave uh oh or yeah whatever they call it in, in a yeah you know i lived in in the south we had uh, tornado warnings and watches and out here we yep. have uh your heat, heat advisory <laughs> heat advisor yeah it's it's hot That's today it. and it's humid because we just had monsoon come through uh last week so everything's still wet and with that oh, heat, wow. it's uh it's pretty thick out there today so yeah uh, but yeah life is grand in in phoenix arizona that's very good i'm glad to hear it i'm glad to hear it um and then um let's see here i i, I want to jump back the only things that i really want to touch on for uh kind of a historic moment is just to kind of talk to you because this is, you know, hammer away, which is music and the human experience. So it's really about you. Um, and so the question that I want to ask you is, um, I want to know about Tim Gaines and where you were when you started in your early band career, because uh, you've been playing now for 45 years, I think, is is uh, kind of what it says on your, on your website, I do believe is where I got that. And at this point, you know, we enter into things with a certain understanding that we didn't have early on. So I'm just kind of wondering what your feelings were after joining Stormer and preparing to record the demos. Just kind of where were you at that time? Yeah, I mean, when I when I joined Stormer, it was like just dream excitement because they were mm -hmm. a huge band. They were a big deal in L.A. when I joined and uh, they'd been around, gosh, uh, mid mid 70s i mean they, yeah. they played shows back to back with van halen and and you know yeah. i think motley played one of their very first shows with stormer you know in 81 wow. or whatever that was but um so i i joined the band and i i came out of uh a couple other bands that i had uh, been in one was an original band and the other band was was like a cover band and uh what were the names of those two uh one of the bands was called Apton Kid. That was an original okay. band. That it was like a power pop kind of. Uh, it wasn't a trio, but uh, guitar, two guitar players, uh, drummer, bass player, and a singer. So um, we we played Gazaris, and that's when I started getting yeah. my my foot in the door playing Hollywood yeah. and, and uh, playing the Starwood and and places like that, and then. Uh, uh, after that, I joined up with a high school friend of mine, Greg Boss, in a band hmm. called White Lace. 
And that was just a mm. cover band we played, you know, at the high schools and uh, played backyard parties and stuff like that. Mm. And that's what led up to me joining Stormer. Uh, they hired White Lace to play one of their own parties. <laughs> 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 and they, they would they would have they had this huge warehouse that they rehearsed in. <laughs> And they'd hire other bands to come play, you know, their parties on the weekend. So we just happened to be one of the bands that played. And uh, their bass player at the time, Jeremy Masana, was was yeah. about ready to leave the band. So they were looking for a bass mm. player. And I was young. I was still in high school. And wow. uh, they asked me to audition. I came down and I knew all the songs. I learned everything. And... Um, I think they were impressed because I learned more than what I was supposed to. <laughs> yeah, that's always a plus. <laughs> so we, we we rehearsed for a while and started playing shows. And um, it was just an excitement for me. It was, you know, because here I am, this high school kid playing with these guys that are, you know, five, seven years older than me. Yeah, and, veteran uh, players for, by then. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, it wasn't my first experience in the studio, but I mean, we we had signed a deal with uh with an independent label mm. and uh they took us into the studio and and we recorded an album and what we ended up doing was we we did uh christmas single first that was yeah. going to be released to uh album rock radio <laughs> um and that's what we did so we, we had a 45 remember those plastic of uh of these two Christmas songs and uh, their original songs and they got some airplay. And uh, so this was being released. That was like December of 80, uh, gosh, 80, 81. Okay. I was going to say, yeah. Then that following year, we were waiting for the album to be finished and uh, it ended up uh, the, the record label ended up going under. Yeah. And so all this stuff ended up being recorded, but never released. So we got a single out of it. And, and, and nobody uh, still to this day knows where those are, huh? Well, yeah, there was, <clears throat> excuse me, there was about 500 printed up. And um, oh, okay. every once in a while you see them on eBay. And I've got <laughs> a couple. i got one hanging on my wall over here. But uh, Sweet. Uh, every now and then you'll see something on eBay where somebody's got one. And I don't know who, you know, how they ended up with whoever they did but um, yeah. somebody came in and stole a box of them and so whatever was given out or or sent out to radio stations at the time yeah. um, there was the additional records were stolen and so those are still out there somewhere somebody's either hanging on to them or have given them up who knows but um, yeah. we're talking wow. like 1980 81 so how many years ago was that so 40 years <laughs> yeah 40 yeah, <laughs> yeah it's been a while. so some of those singles are out there and and uh you know that's crazy the money someday who knows yeah you know i mean now um and and thank you so much oak city gamers look at that i freaking love this viking dude oh well. <laughs> somebody's throwing me some love yeah, there that's nice screen bigger because i can't i Let's we'll see here. I, I don't want to touch oh, something else. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I, 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 yeah. I, so, uh, so then you, uh, so then you're out on the, you know, you're at the sunset strip, you're doing all this. Um, and then, oh, and real quick here too, about uh, as far as Stormer is concerned, you know, are, have there been any more discussions about possible Stormer re reunion and who would be in the band in the lineup? Because there were yeah. quite a few people in and out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't talked to any of the guys in in a while. As okay. Far as the reunion goes. We had, we had done some talking about it maybe three or four years ago. Gotcha. Um, and uh, I don't know it, if it'll ever happen or not. I yeah. know. I, I keep in touch with uh, the drummer Steve, and mm -hmm. uh, he's pretty much the only one I I really keep in contact with at the moment. Gotcha. But um, yeah, who knows? I mean, yeah might happen might not <laughs> might not that's what that's what time is all about right you just yeah. never know it, it you just leave it as a mystery yeah um and then uh because you i guess you also collaborated with donnie simmons and uh tom hardy in between times with striper yeah. 
Yeah. yeah so Donnie and I have done uh, some projects, some writing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but he mainly just hung out and he he's god i love the guy he's he's probably mm -hmm. one of the the best guitar players um just wow. just a sweet tasty guitar player I, I mean you don't see a lot of these guys that play like him anymore there's yeah. a, another guy danny johnson from uh, rick derringer's band and broad Stewart. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh who else you know who else plays real sweet like that is uh Aldo, Aldo Nova. <laughs> he's, yeah. He's just one sweet, tasty guitar player. It's, it's yeah, fun. no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, I'm, I'm so eager to ask to talk to you about that. That's that's my highlight question. One of my highlight questions of the show uh, today is to talk to you a little bit about that in a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then well, uh, going back to Stormer really quick. Um, with, yeah. Yeah. With Donnie. And then also Tom, you mentioned Tom. Party. Uh, we we had started a band, uh, or I had played in a band with him in uh, the early '90s called No Stranger, and uh, oh okay, that was another great band that nobody ever heard. Um, and there's demos floating around with that too um, that need to see the light of day because we had some. Yeah. It was like the '90s, so we we're playing Journey kind of music, but I mean this was '90s when grunge was you know starting to take off and be big so yeah um anyways just a just another little side note yeah and i wonder if that's something that's going to come up a little bit later i do have uh uh oh, this guy's from stormer oak city gamer says <laughs> he goes i know yeah. a guy yeah i know a guy yeah uh and then what else do we have here we want more jazz music from the magic of your fingers on your base. <laughs> Breakfast at Timothy's yeah. volume two, they're yeah, calling it, for. It will be a, a freeform jazz ensemble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to if I if I ever found the right players to to work with. But well, uh, well it looks I, like we need to keep in touch with Oak City Gamers because they say that he's got yeah, the cool. person that he knows has a bunch of Stormer stuff. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah, hook so, me up. <laughs> yeah, he's a music local. He's German. His name is Herschel. Herschel. Nine. Kind of kind. We have ways of making you give a stormer stuff. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I'm I'm full blooded German, but I don't know anything other than nine and schnell. Yeah, and <laughs> schnell. Ah, yeah. come and see here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's like oh, knowing yes. Mexican. Yeah. They know Spanish. I say taco, burrito. Yeah. Oh man, that's great. Um, yeah, he calls him Hesh. Has a giant LP and forty-five collection. Excellent. So, yeah, born distracted is breakfast at Timothy's. Yeah, liking it. Why do I have to be at work now? He says. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they'd love to they'd rather be here and complete good for you you're working yeah exactly <laughs> exactly now how do you how did what's the exact pronunciation of your true last name well the american version is hagelgans 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 is that's yeah german uh, it means yeah. i think ice goose <laughs> <laughs> which if you're talking about liquor that's yeah. not bad yeah so uh don't ask me how it came about because uh, we we <laughs> traced our our family lineage back to the 1470s but there there's different uh uh spellings of it some are spelled huh. with a z some are spelled with a tz some are spelled with an s g a n s um, Holy cow. and my uh my uncle Actually, my dad's uncle was the first one to go mm -hmm. with Gaines. He was a, a radio announcer. Um, and uh, he went by Gaines. And then my dad's brother uh, was a nightclub performer. He played jazz. And uh, he went by Ronnie Gaines. So wow. Gaines was a stage name that my, uh, from my dad's side, that my, his yeah. uncle and my uncle ended up using. 
And, and then did, I did went you... with Gaines just for the heck of it. I wasn't going to go yeah. by Gaines, but I just thought about it one day and went by Tim Gaines. And yeah. now my brother goes by Gaines, Steve Gaines. So, uh, <laughs> they started yeah. a trend, man. Yeah. So, and I then mean, who would go by Hegel Gaines? I mean, that's like impossible. Well, who knows? I mean, I can't try even get it. people to spell Gaines correctly, and let alone. <laughs> <video>. <laughs> <laughs> ah, see, it's uh, all about the spelling. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many times I get called steward. Steward, yeah, with a D. I'm like, <laughs> the only stewards I know are in a church, on a plane, in a boat. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anybody with that name. Never seen it, anybody with that name. Um, What is this one? Does Tim still do the Elton John covers? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't lately. Um, that, that was another thing leading up to Elton John was, uh, or with me rehearsing Elton John was uh, Kenny Metcalf, uh, Elton, the early years band was, uh, yeah. uh, he's a great Elton impersonator cover band. Um, and he was the keyboard player for Striper way back when. Wow. Um, one of our, our live keyboard players. And so he does, he does an Elton John cover he has for years and he's been on uh, the Axis TV network, you know, these, these uh, guys that do the cover bands. And yeah. so he, he's, yeah, I've, I've flown out and done gigs when their bass player can't make it. And I, I put on a wig and my sixties <laughs> glasses and I, I wear the seventies uh, elevator shoes and, and uh, my disco pants and all that stuff. But so you're even taller than you already are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your stature, though, is is perfect for that kind of a band. It's great. Yeah. It's, well, it's great. To, it's great stuff to play. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If he ever asked me to do it again, I know they're they're out playing right now. Which since everything. And what do they up, call that? Yeah. What do they call that uh, band? Elton, the early years. Kenny Metcalf oh. as Elton. Um, and then the early years band. So they do all the early Elton John stuff up until uh, I think Rock, Rock of the Westies or okay, whatever that yeah. band changed. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, let's see here. Uh, well, we we uh, we're talking about getting to Striper. Speaking of Striper, I just was going to ask you the same, you know, as about that stormer period when you jumped in and were excited and thrilled about jumping into that. Uh, just tell us how you felt. Same kind of thing. How did you feel when you teamed up with the other members in Rock's regime? Yeah, so this was like a big change in my life. because So as I had been in stormer, I, I hadn't been... Uh, I don't know. I had just gotten into the partying scene and just mm -hmm. you know, drinking and, and uh, doing blow. And it just, it was just, it wasn't a good thing for me anymore. And I, mm -hmm. I, I was starting to feel within my, my spirit that I wasn't living a decent life. Um, yeah. and it's, is it, it's gotta be tough when you're just, I mean, we, we all know, a situation where we're surrounded by something and we can be taken in. It may not be that, it may be just something else, you know, and we all just fall into place. And it doesn't, it, at the time, it doesn't seem completely wrong. Yeah, well, I, I grew up, my dad's a pastor, so I grew up in yeah. the church. And yeah. so I just felt this, this tugging on my heart that I wasn't living right. And so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, started to get uh, my life back to God again. And, and uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my, my, uh, my drummer that I was in the band, the Afton Kid with, he became a Christian. And I saw such a radical change in his life that I, I was like, wow, this is really something, you know, I, yeah. I need to uh, check this out. And so I, I left Stormer and I started going to church uh, and just kind of getting my life together yeah, and, awesome. uh, with God. And um, it was probably six to eight months had gone by since I had been out of Stormer. And uh, I got a call one night 
from, uh, or I got a message um, that Robert Sweet had called my house and my mom had talked to him. <laughs> said he's, he's uh, in this band called Rock's Regime and uh, they're, they're a Christian band, which I didn't remember them ever being a Christian band at the time because we had played shows back to back before. But yeah. anyway, so I, I had been praying for some kind of Christian group to be used, you know, musically. Um, um, and so it just so happened that the day that I had prayed this prayer that Robert had called that night when I got home. And I was at a prayer meeting that day. <laughs> That's pretty home. incredible. I came home that night and there was a note, uh, Robert and Rock Regime was a Christian band. Uh, anyways, I called them up and, and we got together the next day and I listened to their, their demo that they had made. And yeah. the song uh, was on the first album called From Wrong to Right was the song yeah. that I heard. And it just like, that was it. You know, I'm, that's it. I'm that's the one. So, yeah. So we, but we, you know, so I had gone from Stormer where these guys are all seasoned and, and uh, we had done some touring and, and uh, played out a lot. And, and so I'm, I'm with this band Stormer, which are older guys getting in a band. Yeah. With guys that are my age yeah and we're all a bunch of knuckleheads and immature and you know <laughs> it was just a, it was a different experience and that's what i'm saying it's just yeah it's it's tough yeah so it, it was fun i mean it was even more yeah. of a learning experience and and things took off after i joined the band and we mm -hmm. uh we ended up changing the name from rock regime to striper and then we got signed yeah. to uh Enigma Records. Enigma and Records, yeah. Went in and did the first. Well, we did some demos first, and then we went in and did uh, the first album, which was an EP. I think mm -hmm. we had like six thousand dollar budget for the whole thing. It was like, you know, we just went in a thousand bucks a song, and and yeah. the way everything was just kind of hurried, and and the way it was recorded, and it was just, you know, a learning experience. And sure. Never thought that it would do anything. I mean, yeah, there was always a chance. We're just, you know, we not, we didn't, I didn't give much thought to the future. Ah, just, right. You know, this is what we're doing and what I'm doing, and and it took off. And yeah, I mean, the band itself, we we already had a following based on um, the kids that came to our rehearsals on Thursday night. We'd have a Bible study. We the band would get up and play. And then we'd have this uh, Bible study afterwards. And we had our friend, uh, Michael Guido, who hmm. was a drummer that I played with an African kid. He got into ministry. And so he's getting his feet wet in ministry just kind wow. of for the first time. And we're getting our feet wet and, yeah. and just, you know, learning about all this stuff and just giving it to God and letting him take it wherever he's going to take it. And that's what happened. Right. Um and kids started showing up, you know, went from like maybe five or 10 people to on, on a Thursday night to maybe 50 to 75, 100 people just <laughs> out in this. We had we were rehearsing a garage. <laughs> so it was like there's a picture somewhere of, of there's a room just filled. We're, we're like up in the corner playing <laughs> and there's kids all around us. And then they're going out the door into the driveway and into the front yard. So we, we had, um, at the time of our first show in 84, February of 84, we had already had a following just based on our rehearsals. So we, we played our first show, and I forget who we were opening for, but um, the place was packed out with our fans. And as soon as we got done playing, everybody left. <laughs> <laughs> and it was some local band that was, you know, up and coming. And... Uh, all of our fans were there and it looked like it was going to be a packed house for them, but they all left after we they all left. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Got to go. Yeah. My, yeah. my time here is done. <laughs> but it just, it, everything just kind of blossomed and took off because we, we were open to what God was doing in our lives. And mm -hmm. we just, we didn't know any better. We just mm -hmm. gave it to God. And so here we want to be different. We want, to tell people about God, tell them, tell yeah. them about they, that they can be saved. Um, 
through Jesus Christ, through yeah. uh, what he did on the cross. And, and people responded to that. And yeah. we were playing like shows. We play two shows in a row at, at the Troubadour in Hollywood where there's lines going around the block for people to get in. And then they come back and do another show. I mean, we're, wow. it was just, it took off and it got huge really fast. And, um, we went to Japan and like within a year we were in Japan, uh, while we're recording, uh, soldiers album. Yeah. Before the album had even been finished, we went to Japan and that's where you get the live in Japan video. And, yeah. and, um, anyways it, it just it blossomed and took off and and uh it was just really cool to see wow. how things happened yeah now i do have to ask because um you know you, to me of course you know and and uh you know you seem like a quieter reserved type person you know it, and it was it was a bit of a social you know a, a jungle out there on the Sunset Strip, you know, London and some of the other bands that were up and coming that we'd end up seeing uh, in the uh, decline of Western civilization part two. Um, how did you react to that? I mean, we already know kind of, but so maybe I should move forward uh, on that. And actually, cause you already told me it's easy to get wrapped up when into all that when you were doing the Stormer days. Mm -hmm. But then what I got to thinking about earlier is most of us who were geographically completely away from that area and only heard about it later after the hair metal explosion happened, you know, most of us really, you know, we're, some of us aren't thinking that we all just think it's the eighties, you know, I'll oh, remember the eighties and the hair bit. Well, a yeah. lot of that stuff was up and coming in the late seventies. Yep. So while on the East coast, you were thinking, and some, I'm sure punk was happening on the West coast too, but you know, you have punk and disco on its way through and yeah. and here you but during that time, 78, 79, you know, you got Van Halen who was up and coming in the mid 70s. Yeah. And so that scene was building through that time frame. And then, yeah. yes, and by the time the 80s. I, hit. I've seen I mean, I saw Quiet Riot many times with Randy Rhodes in the band and Rudy. There you go. I mean that that era of music those guys you know obviously i think it was 80 when did they come out with that first album mental health was the so mental health was 81 yeah. 81 yeah because back in black was 80 that was kind of the yeah. the resurgence or the start the you know the resurgence of metal that's right because randy ended up in in ozzy so that's mm -hmm. that's yeah now it's yeah uh, but uh so I, I, yeah, I, I saw all that. I, and, you know, even before Motley was, was, uh, Motley crew, I mean, London, right. you know, right. And I, and I have to correct that. I'm, I'm wrong. It was 83 when metal health came out. 81 was Ozzy and he was coming up in, in 81, but then 83 is when that metal health album hit because. Yeah. And but, then rats first yeah. album, I think was around the yes. same time. 84. Yeah. yeah. And they have the EP though before that, yes. Yeah. So yes. So yeah. I mean so there's it, another it was a cool time. I mean, the the seventies into mm -hmm. the early eighties, and then mm -hmm. Hollywood just kind of turned into the that whole poser thing, you know, where everybody was just <laughs> you know the same. <laughs> and, was, uh, that must have been some kind of crazy um I don't know. It, you almost uh, it, it, it kind of a war of minds. Who can be, you know, more? Who can be better than the other one? Who's who does their shtick more or better than the other? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. it, it was the look too. I mean, um, mm -hmm. yeah. everybody. How much makeup can you wear? You know, and how <laughs> high can you tease your hair? And <laughs> yes, I did it. I mean, I was all part of that whole thing. It's like yeah, and yeah. You know, no wonder things changed. You know, Guns N' Roses and uh, uh, Nirvana, when everything changed to Seattle and, and mm -hmm. that whole new sound yeah. came into play, you know. Yeah. We, we had our 10 years of time and or fame or whatever. And, yeah. Um, you know, but you're talking about the punk scene before that. And mm -hmm. uh, I remember 
going to see Black Flag. I wasn't a punker, but I I went to the whiskey and saw Black Flag. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, I don't know, this is some different kind of music, you know. And right. Alternative would be would be Blondie, you know. At yeah. the same time, it's like that, you know, from one extreme to the other. And then there's yeah. other rock bands that were still trying to do their thing. Everything was yeah. like, was, you know, in this big battle to see what the next, what the next Van Halen or the next thing would be. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, the hair metal just kind of took off and. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, it's got to be an interesting thing where you, um, you know, you get Van Halen going and now, you know, all of the record companies are looking for the next, like you said, who's going to be that next Van Halen, you know, um, since it's an American deal and you've got all these, you know, American labels that are out there, Capital and all these Warner Brothers and all this other stuff. So you get, there's a lot of uh, competition to be that next person, right? Yeah. So... Um, let me see what I've got here also. Um, Oak City Gamers there. Um, with your experience uh, in different bands and representing a Christian faith with Striper, how difficult is it to handle the judgments of many people who think we cannot be wrong in life? Well, I mean, wrong in life. I think the hardest part was was uh getting attacked by other christians i mean you expect you expect the, right. the non-believers or unbelievers to to attack you that's just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. part of the part of the deal but to have uh you know and, the, and we dealt with that and they probably still do um deal yeah. with people in the church that came up against the band because you know, we're playing the wrong kind of music or we're dressing a certain way or, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we, we had to deal with it, but mm -hmm. I think, um, uh, that, that all came to a head with, uh, the against the law album. I mean, we finally yeah. just got so fed up that we came out with yeah. our own rebellion to the whole, <laughs> the whole yeah. hacking. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I was wondering what that must have been like, even just earlier on. Um, how, how often uh, I was asking uh, too. I was going to ask you how often did you guys play? Say as Rock's regime, how often were you playing out? Um, yeah, as the band Rock's regime, we didn't. When I joined the band, I, I think let's see, it was eighty august of 83 we we're rock okay. regime and i think it was probably within three months that we changed our name to striper so oh okay august of 83 and our first show as striper was uh february 84 wow. so it was just uh, just a few months yeah i couldn't imagine it was easy being you know working that um and i shouldn't say it that way that's not that that doesn't seem sincere um, being a Christian band, being a band of believers, um, you know, I can, I can imagine how, um, it wasn't easy being in and amongst that atmosphere, you know, it, you know, it, for me, it wasn't, I don't, I don't think for any of us really, it was, I don't think it was that hard. Okay. Uh, we, I mean, we had our, within ourselves, we had our, our core group of, guys we had um you know so it was us and we had guys on our road crew everybody pretty much everybody that was associated with us was was a believer so oh, that's cool i mean we it wasn't until later you know when we started playing out with with other bands that that mm -hmm. would open like on uh, on mm -hmm. the soul uh, not soldiers on the to hell with the devil on that tour is when we started having other bands actually touring with us and opening yeah. you know for a period of time and mm -hmm. we all got along you know depending upon who the band was hurricane or uh white lion or, or whoever um loudness I, yeah um, i know when i saw you yeah. here the first time actually that's when we met was in 89 on the in god we trust mm -hmm. tour and jet boy was opening up jet boy, yeah i mean we yeah. all got along um even though they they all knew 
what we were about and you know they respected that and we respected yeah. them and you know, we all ate dinner together and hung out well, together and yeah and let's face it it doesn't make uh being a believer doesn't make you anything different of a human you're still human you're still you know i think a lot of people just they they want to see that or view it or describe it as something that holds you back you yeah. know when in fact you're like no it's just something that it's just a belief that i have it's no different than anything you believe and i can be just as cool and because we're just human we can all be cool to each other it's really just it's just a different whatever rules you're going to live by that's what it comes down to it's got yeah you know, and you know it's like we're we are human and we make mistakes and mm -hmm. you know, i guess we're held to a, a as a christian we're held to a higher standard than than other people would be but uh, right you know. which you know I, I've played gigs here in town before for, you know, for years. I've been playing for a little over 20 years now. And I've had people come up to me and we'll have these, all of a sudden we have these meaningful conversations and they're like, well, you probably think I'm a bad person because I, I go, it's not between you and me. I think you're just fine. I, you haven't done anything to me, you know, to make me think anything different. And when it comes down to that, I'm not the person that's here to judge you. I'm, I'm, I, that's not my job. So, you know, it, it gets a little interesting when people yeah. throw that down, when they people throw that down on things, you know, you're like, no, just yeah. chill out. It's all good. So, but uh, yeah, God gave you the tools. If your faith is strong, they're good tools. Yeah. Believe and ye shall perceive. Nice. Um, so, um, let me see here. What's we have next? Because you spent you spent a lot of years uh, in and out of Striper, um, and you recorded ten albums. Um, music recorded music for ten albums. Let's put it that way, because in and amongst those are like a best of for which you guys recorded some new music and yeah. um, and so you know, I, mean, I don't I don't know how many I played on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I really don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> well, well, there's a list. There's a list in many different places. I mean, and uh, you know, and there's things that you recorded, like you know, live material and things like that too. That that are out there. I've got a list on my website, but I I haven't counted them up. You do. You do. And and it's uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna step into that here in a little bit. Um, one of my favorite things that I got was a, a laser disc. And I still have it, and I can still play it. Um, as uh, the laser disc of in the beginning, uh, yeah. I thought that was a that was a pretty cool video. Um, yeah, and uh, I, have, they, I, I guess they put it on. Also. I just need a laser disc player. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I got <laughs> I got live in Japan, live in Japan, and in the beginning on laser disc. Ah, so, are they both on the same disc, or are they two different discs? Two different. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. Just want to make sure. Yeah, and I guess they've got the in the beginning is now on DVD. I'm sure. I, I think I saw that. So yeah, I, I'm not sure. I yeah. I've got so much stuff in boxes. I have to pull it out. I'm I'm sure I got that too. <laughs> I got a got a friend of mine like that. Yeah, everything everything is on DVD, but yeah, now yeah. you can just go to YouTube and watch it all. You can you can. I was watching a pretty cool show of uh, Foo Fighters who are here tonight actually. Um, and, uh, they were playing in Chicago, downtown Chicago at Lollapalooza. So that was, that was pretty cool. Um, but what are some of your, you know, with the striper thing? I mean, how where I hate to, ask, well, I don't hate to ask this, but I want to ask this to be, how are you with, I mean, obviously we've been talking striper. So, I mean, where, when did you, st when were you stepped out last here? Was that uh, been like? Oh, so I was, let's see, I was fired in 2017. 17. Okay. Like late May or early June. I, I gotcha. Know, yeah. Gotcha. So. Well, but yeah, like, I wanted just, to ask. I yeah, go ahead. <laughs> What's that? I'll, I said, I'll just leave it at that. Well, we decided to part ways. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. 
but you know during those during those years i mean those were some great uh some great years in music and a great uh thing to be a part of and uh what are just some of your favorite times memories experiences uh of those albums and of that you know that time frame what are you and i guess of those records what are what are say your top three favorites yeah, top three number one would be against the law okay interesting and, uh, okay that it was just a time i mean so you got to understand um uh, some of what we had gone through that led up to that album being recorded was you know having to deal with um having to deal with being in the spotlight, mm. um, which in itself mm. isn't bad, but it, it, it got to the point where we, we couldn't do anything, uh, just being a normal person because we'd mm. be accused, you know, the fingers are always pointing at us and, and right. we'd be accused of, you know, I couldn't go to like a convenience store because, you know, they sold right. beer or, liquor or cigarettes right. or something. It's like, what do you, you know, people are always like looking at, you know, you can't be talking to a girl because. Yeah. You know, yeah. God forbid you're, you know, messing around. So it's right. like that, that whole thing just got old and, and we were having, uh, even within the band, it, it got to the point where we were self policing each other. Yeah. Know, and it's like it was kind of becoming a miserable right experience to be in the band because it's, the only thing you could do afterwards is just go to your hotel room and lock the mm -hmm. door and, and and uh so when when we what led up to that was uh after and god we trust we just we had some time off and we just kind of let loose and and hung out together oh, which we never did before it was like i was always jealous of like it seemed like the motley crew guys were having a fun time they'd go out and ride motorcycles or whatever and, and just hang out and they were like a gang and it's like we weren't we were we were just you know off everybody was off doing their own thing and right uh, isolated and so we got together and just hung out for the first time i think ever since I'd been in wow. the band and just played pool and, and uh, we'd watch movies and just uh, work on some songs. And so we, we started, it was like an eight, eight month period of, of just hanging out together and, and rehearsing some songs, writing songs together. And, and just um, that, that whole album, just there's a camaraderie that that's just, you can hear it. Wow. And it's just, it's like a tight knit unit. Um, and uh, so anyways, just going in that, that album to me at least is, is one of my favorites. And then uh, mm -hmm. uh, the last, the last two that I worked on also, actually the covering mm -hmm. I'd say was probably uh, my third. And then um uh <laughs> no more hell to pay i couldn't think of the name of the album yeah no I've, been, I've been there no more hell to pay is probably my number two favorite oh and okay the covering is probably my third and they were all just a lot of fun and good experiences yeah. to to record and and just hang out and make some good music yeah that's cool what I, thanks for sharing that about against the law because you know a lot of times um even though there's a lot of stuff on that album I love, I'm, mean, you know, I, I don't know if I've ever thought of it as, you know, one of my top ones, but what often happens for mm -hmm. folks who are listeners who don't maybe don't play, or they've been a big fan for years is they don't ever look at it like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate you mentioning that and that experience about that yeah. album, because I think there was just a lot of questions. I think when it came out, a lot of people were like, what the heck is this? Or what are they trying to say? Or there's just too much. Yeah, yeah I mean, just, the song you know. itself, Against the Law, was was about basically we don't live, you know, all these people mm. pointing their fingers at us and trying to pull us in right. different directions within the church. Right. 
we're yeah. not we look for God. We're not following, you know, your denominations or whatever your ideals are, you know, right. within, within the church that we're supposed to uh, live under, I suppose. You know. Yeah. And it's 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 like I've always said, you know, it's in the book. I don't understand why we still have all of the different denominations. I mean, I kind of do. I kind of know why in yeah. a in an earthly sense but in a in a christian sense and i don't understand it because it says right there in the book that they all read it says god hates division and i'm like i don't i don't get why you still need to divide yourself from them by yeah. saying that's not well, who we are or the author of division or confusion you know it's the devil that's it yeah. that's it you know and uh it's just kind of an interesting it's an interesting thing kind of go it's kind of weird kind of weird like sex pistols why the sex pistols as a punk band who is against the man and against rules why'd they ever sign with emi i don't understand it yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're gonna sign with the man just so the man puts our music out yeah <laughs> you may have been bigger and lasted longer if you'd have held out and just done your own records, because who cares? You know? Yeah. You're just yeah. pissing off anyway. So it doesn't matter whether you do it with a record company or on your own. You'd probably do they put one record out. So it's just <laughs> silly. Yeah. Silly. Um, but now what let me ask you this though. I, I have to ask this now because what are your feelings on uh soldiers is probably just nostalgically probably maybe it is but i love the songs on that record still and um you know how'd you what uh what's just a couple of words you say about that album that album was um like i said we were recording that when we went to japan so um mm -hmm. that was the, michael wagner wasn't it yeah yeah, yeah. he just retired he, yeah he's he's a great guy um yeah um i hooked up with him a few years back when I lived in Nashville and yeah, uh, he had his studio there and we mm -hmm. went by one day and said hello and went to lunch. But, um, we, we recorded that, um, it was, we, okay. So this is another thing. Uh, when we were recording that, uh, Metallica was doing, um, the 85, which album were they, were they doing Ride the Lightning? Uh, or were they doing Masters, actually? I think Masters. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, so we were in the same studio. So we we go in every day and record, and they were in the, the other wow. room doing their stuff. And so we, we'd see each other in the, uh, you know, in the lobby. Uh, and, you know, nobody ever said anything to each other. But, uh, <laughs> I, I just kind of remember those days from uh wow the experiences and just the things that happened and, but yeah um we we did that at a place called amigo studios and oh, okay then we did a few tracks at a place called uh smoke tree ranch also oh wow in uh amigo was in uh, burbank and uh smoke tree ranch was out out in the valley somewhere uh, but when you see uh the video uh, soldiers under command the actual yeah. music video yeah. um, mm -hmm. you can see us standing around the mic and singing or there's shots of michael with the, the microphone and yeah. there's a big there's a big uh wooden wheel behind him like a yeah. wagon wheel and that that was at smoke tree ranch where they, they did oh, okay that. anyways wow. just, but it, it was it was a fun experience i i personally i i don't care for the mix on that album as far as mm. you can't hear the bass it's just buried and yeah it's just one of those things yeah interesting wonder about yeah you wonder if a remaster could bring that out a little bit more yeah i don't know it was uh just the way it was at the time and yeah i mean you can hear me on other albums later on so yeah that's all interesting good. thought some beautiful harmonies on that record just like there are on on all of the right all the rest but i mean the first some, two that's albums first two albums uh yellow and black attack and and soldiers i actually sang 
you know, we, we did those and we sang live at the time. I mean, we were wow. singing those vocals live. Um, but I, I sang on the record and then, um, I think I sang on, uh, on, uh, against the law and then Oz and Mike did everything else. They, they usually have a system where they, they just go in and just gotcha. knock out the vocals and they just gotcha. stack them and stack them and they're, you know, right. And then play my bass and I go home. <laughs> 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 well here was a uh you know here's a question too from manuel we know we can't change the past but are there any decisions that you regret having made in your musical years yeah i mean there's probably lots of yeah. decisions i i've made that i i probably um you know i can't think of anything offhand that i that i would change yeah. because but yeah i mean you wish you'd play better in a certain song or played a different way or mm. stood up for yourself or whatever, you know, and, yeah. and, yeah. uh, you know, it's all a learning experience and you move on. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing I can change, but nope. you know, yeah. I have, there's probably things I would have done differently if I would have known what I know now. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's usually, uh, that's usually one of our biggest uh, lessons, right? Don't live yeah. it with regret. That's always my thing is everything happens for a reason and everything happens when it should. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it, you know, MTV was such a huge dang thing back in the day. I mean, do you have it? Do you have any good, good reflections from those MTV video days? Yeah. Um, that's, that's when everything really took off. I mean, up mm. until, I mean, soldiers, even at that time, we weren't getting any airplay, but uh, to hell with the devil, we did, uh, we, we did yeah. the calling on you video. Yeah. We did that at uh, A&M on the Charlie Chaplin stage. Wow. You know, the Chaplin stage was, I mean, that was the old Chaplin studios, the silent picture days. And, and uh, wow. We, we did the video and, um, you know, we'd done other videos, but this was like a full budget video. I mean, they yeah. you know, lights and smart huge and all stage with the logo and yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, well, that was, that was, a uh, the next album, um, uh, from, oh, album. was that the big okay. dollar, hundred dollar bill stage that was, yeah. Uh, yeah. um, anyways, point being, we went in and did this this video and it got airplay mm. it started getting in rotation and um while we're on the road then we did uh um uh free we did the free video while we were mm -hmm. on the road and that was all done with cameras you know traveling and then we did uh honestly and so yeah, we had those three yeah. songs when honestly yeah. hit we're still playing uh we're playing theaters you know thousand fifteen hundred seat theaters when honestly hit it took off and it ended up in the top 40 and we went from playing theaters to playing 15 14 15 thousand seat arenas on our own wow and uh so just that one song changed everything and that was all, you know, in TV at the time, the airplay. And, and uh, I mean, everybody had a ballot at that time. I was going to say that was ballot. everybody yeah. had. It, so, yeah. Yeah, it was it was <laughs> those were the days, man. Those were the days. Yeah. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, I was just thinking about this, too. Uh, oh, I know. I know what I wanted to do here. Um, I was wondering, you know, you've had a catalog of music, you know, like many of our other bass brothers, uh, folks that have even been on the show, like Billy Sheehan, Mike LaPond, Doug Pinnock. They have a list of other projects that they've done over the years. Mm -hmm. And as I was looking at your website, I was noticing there's a cool little slideshow at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I just was wondering if you wouldn't mind. I, I got some of these photos in. I wondered if you might walk me through what some of these are okay that this is a band i was just uh in up until 
last year, uh, last oh. January when COVID hit. This is uh, of Gods and Monsters, the first, yeah. the first version, and that was with uh, Dean, who's now back with Journey, and wow. Kevin Butcher was the singer, still is a singer, and Joey Tafoya okay. on guitar, and uh, we we did an album, uh, released it, and did some shows we, we started doing some shows around texas and uh oh gosh we played here in tucson i think was our last show that we did and then COVID hit yeah kind of shut everything down so but it, it was yeah. just a fun band it was a project that that i got involved with and and uh a lot of fun they they've just reformed uh, kevin has reformed with some new players and i think they oh. either have a new album out or getting getting ready to release release a new album and uh, wow good guys though wow and then there's this one same band this, is that same band. Different? that was okay. uh, either before or after we played uh i think that's in dallas gotcha yeah dean amazing on the voice i don't know where you know he's like john sykes to me because i'm like yeah john sykes started doing you know, and back in like 88, he started doing uh blue murder. And I'm like, where's this guy been the whole time? Yeah. This guy's yeah, got Dean, a voice. Dean, Dean's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Yeah. I mean, you, you hear him singing. Uh, gosh, he, he's got a great voice. So. Yeah. He does uh, all he, that journey stuff and he's a monster, monster player. I yeah. Love Dean. He's a great guy. Yeah. And then here we go. Here's the photo. Here's there the you album. are. That's Kenny Metcalf as Elton, um, and uh, I think this is in El Paso. I mean, oh, is that right? We're playing uh, a casino somewhere, but yeah. So his daughter Charlene is uh, she plays uh, Kiki D. Oh, and, sweet! Uh, I think she's still managing. She manages at the band. Wow. That's fantastic. <laughs> she plays Kiki D. That's great. Yeah. And then, then here's some shots through the years. Yeah. So, uh, and again, I like stingrays. I, you know, yeah. I still, well, I still have my white stingray. Yeah. Right, let me grab it. Yeah. All right. So, oh, the yeah. white stingray is uh, 1980. I think was Stormer and then the same the, okay so the picture with the yellow and black background yeah. is the same yeah. base but it was uh it was done with electric tape yellow and black electrical tape <laughs> which made the base not resonate it, it, so they, yes <laughs> Robert Robert did this he put he because we couldn't afford a paint job back in those days everything was done you know we did everything but Robert put tape on my base, yellow and black tape, and then he put this varnish. It was like a, a urethane oh, over no. it to make it look like it, you know, was a lacquer. Yeah. Like a lacquer finish. The problem was is that it was like encasing the, the body in rubber. Yeah. Yes. So it didn't resonate. It made my base sound terrible. So <sighs> um, anyways, that thing got put aside for a few years, and then uh, I had it refreshed. <laughs> And uh, I still play it. It's like my main bass that I play to this day. Oh, and then I, I picked up uh, a black one. It's a 2008 model. And uh, so both wow. of those pictures on the bottom are just me playing the black one, which I've sold since then. Wow. So so here, I'll have you. You can hold, you can hold it up. Let me put you in. Uh... This guy. Can I get it on camera here? Yeah, let me, let me do a solo. There you go. Okay, so yeah. we'll just throw this. I mean, all the damage has been done by me over the years. Yes. The road rash. Yes. I bought this guy brand new for four, four hundred fifty bucks somewhere in there. Oh, Came with man. a hard shell case, T-shirt, all the case candy, and a gig bag. So I have the Music Man gig bag. I have everything. Oh, the strap, the original Music Man strap. Oh my that. gosh. Um. But I don't know if you can see. Maybe if I can get it. Maybe there. there's like scratch. yeah, there, right there is a kind of a circular spot there, a blemish. 
Yeah, that's not right. right but there's like marks on here. Yeah. Let's try this bottom. Yeah, you're not going to see it. But there's marks where the tape used to be. That's um, <laughs> from where. So there was tape, and I don't know if he used a razor blade or what to like oh, to cut it. But it's like the whole body's got these marks where, <laughs> where the tape used to be. So I don't know. Oh. Anyways. This is my baby. I've had it since uh, since new. And, oh uh, wow, <laughs> wow! Yeah, I have my uh, mine is this is my first base, and I just had it on the show a while back um, because it's it's autographed now. So this is my. Oh, here, let me let I me switch you it. out. Let me switch you out there. Oh and wow. I'll make mine the solo layout. So there she is. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So every everybody from Sammy Hagar to Jason Newstead to uh, to Victor Wooten and Eric Brittingham, and we just lost Jeff Labar. He signed on yeah. here as well. That's oh, Jeff Labar right there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. She's and then the first one I got was Mr. Ellison on the back. Oh, uh, very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's been a thing. I losing to... losing rock stars. That's losing... yeah, let me put this down real quick. I mean, I I uh I'm losing so many people. Yeah, we what did we lose? Five and was it five and two weeks now? Yeah, yeah. So um I guess I guess Mike had Mike Howe, I guess, had some medical issues and he that he wasn't uh, ready to hang with anymore. Yeah. So uh, that's a, that's got to be a, a bad, sad story right in there. So, but uh, Dusty Hill and yeah, you know, I don't know, well, kind of wild. We're we're all we're all destined for that at some yeah. point. Yeah. That's at some point. What what's what striper was all about was trying to tell people about don't go to hell give your life to christ so that you don't know when you're gonna pass on we mm -hmm. all have a date with our days coming mm -hmm. but you, you, there's no there's no second chances once you take your last breath yeah and that's yeah. why we want people We've wanted people to know where they're going because there is an afterlife. And our last yeah. our last breath we take here will be our first breath taken in eternity. Yeah. In our hell. And I think, you know, there's a lot of a lot to be said about what those kind of just acknowledging certain situations like that, perhaps that can help you to look uh, have a better view of your neighbor. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, right now with this pandemic and everything, there's so much being put on people against people. And you're like, you know, there's other the things. Major, major division. It's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I call out the old, the Sneetches story all the time, Dr. Mm -hmm. Seuss, because there yeah. was the Sneetches with stars and the Sneetches without. And those, yeah. they didn't want anything to do with each other. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Let's let's take it yeah. down a notch, people, or else we're going to end up a sneech. Yeah. So. Um, so it's it's yeah it's tough. Um, now, uh, tell me a little bit about well, and here's here's signature strings. How about that? Doggone it, bass strings. Yeah, That's gotta the love them bass strings. Line. So those those are uh, it's a company here in Phoenix that uh, uh, I endorse and. Uh, yeah, Eddie. Eddie is a uh, is a good guy. He's helped me out a lot since I've been here in, in Arizona, and uh, he's started this company. And uh, I think he's got a good product. And, That's uh, cool. They, they're taking off. They're they're going to be a big deal. I need to so, try some out. That's for sure. Because yeah, I've been playing that's a lot of four idea. string. Yeah, four string. What? He makes five. He makes whatever you want. Guitar strings. Yeah. Um, cool. So doggoneitstrings.com. 
Yeah. And is that your, is that your favorite? What I just showed there, is that your favorite, uh, gauge? Oh, the gauge. Yeah. That's what I use live. Mm -hmm. And, uh, okay. when I'm at home, I, I either use, uh, I'm either playing flat wounds or I use mm -hmm. uh, a little bit heavier for a recording. Okay. Uh, but I'm, I'm either using a 105 or a 110. Right. Um, okay. But live, I, I like them a little bit slinkier. That's interesting. I'll use a 100 on the bottom. Huh. I might have to try that. I might have to try that. Change it up a little bit myself. Because yeah. sometimes sometimes I get, you know, I just get caught up and that's just what I use. That's just what I do. I'm not a gear guy. I'm not a, you know, if I don't, you I'm not. In, if you dig in too much, like you really start digging in, you're going to, you're going to like probably start going sharp. I mean, that's because, yeah. but I mean, uh, I, I have a tendency to do a lot of bending and uh, they oh, seem good. to bend really well for me. Uh, oh, that's well. good. Yeah. That's good. And that would help with this new band that I'm working with too. So well, yeah, I'll think about that. Well, and that leads me to uh, this photo. Yeah. Breakfast at Timothy's. Well, tell, tell us a little bit about this. Give us a rundown on, on how this album came about and uh, do you have another one in the works at all? Um, yeah. So 2008, I was, uh, I was working in a warehouse in Nashville and I was telling my, my friend, Chris, uh, well, man, I wish I, I wish I had the time to record and, and just do a, like a bass album that we could, let's, let's do, I wanted to do a band. I wanted to, to put something together and just play around in the clubs mm -hmm. or, you know, nothing big. And, uh, I said, I just don't have the time and I'm burnt out. And he started, hmm. I said, I wanted it to be like a bass album, like the bass out front, but he, yeah. he started writing songs. <laughs> and, uh, so Chris, Chris Eddie is, uh, Dwayne Eddie's son. The guitar oh, wow. Um, and he's an excellent producer, songwriter, multi-talented, musician drummer guitar player but he plays everything so wow uh, and singer so i had been in a band with this guy pretty much since i moved to nashville and we knew each other from hollywood days um he, he used to live in, in la and he was in a band that we played with at gazari's called brand boulevard okay so we knew each other since we were young and it just turned out that he he happened to be a neighbor of mine uh in tennessee and we just kind of hooked up again and we played everything from church together to playing in bands together. So we'd been, and then he hired me to to do recording with him all the time. Yeah. So he's producing demos and just, I go down to his house, you know, there's tons of stuff. We were just talking yesterday or the day before um, about a bunch of songs that I had played on. Yeah. And I didn't even remember playing on them, but he <laughs> sent me these songs. And, so anyways, I, I told Chris, I go, man, it'd be great to do something you know a bass album and and just he starts writing these songs and sending them to me and i'm like oh that's pretty cool and then <laughs> next thing i know is like 10 days or so goes by and he's got a whole album written for me <laughs> i'm all right oh, dude thanks and so we we started recording we we recorded drums in his garage and and uh i did uh uh the rhythm bass tracks and then he yeah. laid down guitars and then i recorded the solo bass tracks on so we, we just laid down layered everything and uh and uh we had uh had the album finished had uh david sapiro who was uh in the band blood good who's mm -hmm. uh, uh mix engineer he's he mixed the album he had just finished at the time uh little big town uh oh wow like the song boondocks when that whatever album that yeah. was he had just yeah. he had just finished mixing that album so uh, anyways he he had mixed that we recorded it uh released it mixed it released it and i got the call to to rejoin striper so i just kind of put everything on the back burner yeah and uh, so anyways that album was finished wow. in 2000 and or released in 2009 we recorded 2008 and uh 2009 uh it was fun it's just it's instrumental yeah. um nothing no flash playing or anything and nothing fancy it's just more or less the the bass guitar taking over the melody where somebody would normally would be singing 
So, well, maybe maybe the next one will have some real fiery compositions within it, and you could call it dinner at Timothy's. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you yeah. could do some salsa stuff. You could really I've shake got, it up. I've got, gosh, I got. So I got this little recorder. So I, because I'm right here in my. This is where yeah. I do all my my recording, but I yeah. use a little handheld recorder to record all my ideas and um i've got tons but i just haven't i haven't applied myself i haven't yeah i haven't gotten anything done yet but well well let let this little discussion be the beginning of dinner at timothy's i mean yeah there we go <laughs> you could do some funk you could do some you know do some cool stuff that you would listen to you know while you're having yeah, a dinner a party this stuff is is uh uh Blues, bluesy oriented, oh, uh, yeah. riffy bass lines yeah. that could be done on because I play guitar too. So yeah. I, a lot of it I've done on guitar, and then I reapply the bass. Um, there's jazz stuff in there. There's uh, uh, I don't know. Someday I'll get around to doing it. And yeah, if yeah. There's an audience for it. I I will yeah. release it and. See what yeah, happens. maybe you could have one, maybe one or two tracks on it where you have some vocal. Yeah, change it, you know, anybody change it up wants, somehow. You know, wants to hear my <laughs> my terrible singing. <laughs> ah, well, you don't have to sing. <laughs> oh, I have somebody else. Sing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can have you can have somebody. Else. I'll come in and do something. There you go. And then you can you can kick me out. But uh, but no, that. Uh, Born Distracted wants to thank you for your years with Striper. Awesome. As do I. I mean, that was those were those were fun those were fun years and really cool years to uh, to be listening to some great great metal. I always said that about Striper. You know what? I, you know that's I'm I'm glad that I'm really glad he said that because that's something. Dude, because back in the day, you remember how it was. Um, you know, there were bands that. Um, they had the whole list, right? You'd go to your local Christian store, and it was if you like Rat, try oh, yeah. such yeah. and such. If if you like Iron Maiden, try Baron Cross. If you you know, yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, what was the shoot? What was the one band that I was into that? I mean, doggone! It was was it White Cross that sounded so much like Rat? I mean, uh, it was all. All the way down to the singers sounded just like Stephen Piercy or like the guy Cross. from. Yeah, uh, you know, it's Scott uh, Winslow. It's a singer. Yeah. Did they, did they sound like Rat? Uh, one of them did. One of them sounded just. I'm like, oh my gosh, they sound just like Rat. But that's what I always loved about Striper. Striper was Striper. I didn't. I didn't go out there and think, oh, right. well, these guys yeah. sound a lot like. Boy, they sound a lot like these guys. We, we had we had our own thing going and yeah uh, yeah I mean, truly comparisons to to you know people who compared michael's voice to dennis de young or something well <laughs> but i mean for the most part i i think you know that that was early on his mm -hmm. voice you know these later but, years has yeah. become very powerful and right different right. tone altogether yeah look at this Saludos desde Saludos Chile. Chile. Hola, amigo. <laughs> Thank you for giving Thank us. Giving us. Striper, they were undoubtedly the best moments. Thank you. I, yeah. I love I love Chile. Uh, love being there. It was great country. Yeah, it, I've it heard great things. Yeah. yeah, I've heard great things about the shows down there and doing shows down there and uh, all the way to. Uh, have you seen the Maybe I won't. Maybe I won't say anything about this on here because I don't want to misquote it or anything. It's just a. It's a one of those funny stories that come from um, uh, from the way that you um, translate words. Mm -hmm. So if you ever have the time, check out the zebra um, documentary that's out there. They have a documentary on the band on the band zebra. Yeah. Band zebra. Okay. And there's a great one in there from a, a story about a, them playing in South America and playing a track off their first album. So that's as far as I need to go with that. Okay. Um, 
but yeah, what a great band that is too. I mean, that's yeah, that's an amazing, Gosh, amazing we, thing. We opened for them early on, like did you? 84, 85, somewhere in there. Yeah, California. Wow. So that probably would have been. I mean, it was obviously for maybe No Telling Lies came out in eighty four, eighty five. I think was the three point five album. Um, I don't remember. But just such a good band. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A long time ago. <laughs> Yeah, it was. It was a couple days ago. <laughs> well, um, the next thing I will mention is uh, kind of our history. You know, as I mentioned earlier, you and I met in '89 at the Fox on the In God We Trust tour. Then again, we met in 2013. Uh, it was on the uh, No More Hell to Pay tour, and we met in KC, and that was what I call a wonderful from the ashes fateful night. <laughs> yeah, 2000 and, uh, 2016. Was it 16 is when you guys met there? Yeah, yeah, 2016. Uh, okay, June, I'm totally June, off then. June uh, June 28th. Wow, okay. Was it? No, 16. Now you're making me think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I guess it was for the Fallen Tour then. It, Did I see you three that. times on the Fallen Tour? I guess I saw you three times. You and your wife came back at one show. Yeah, that was the one here yeah. at the Ready Room. Okay. Where, dude, what a night was that? Yeah. I was I was really, I, I was flipping out because we, we got there, everything worked out, we got in. But the opener were two, two awesome women from Nashville. And prior to a striper show the whole crowd is singing nine to five by really? dolly parton yeah <laughs> it's like, what is going on here wow that's great i i probably i i probably wasn't aware of what was going on with the opening yeah unfortunately you know yeah it was it was wild we're they were the, one of the other bands on before us we're in the back teasing our hair and yeah <laughs> <laughs> getting ready for the show no I, yeah. yeah that was a trip though that was the ready room then before that uh i saw you in peoria um yeah. i took my friend cremena from work and she mm -hmm. and i drove up and saw you guys in peoria and oh in fact i think i probably have brought, i think i probably uh, have you either brought muffins or cookies or both. i did i brought muffins either, either one there we go yeah there's Peoria. There's okay. St. Louis. Uh, there's Kansas City. Okay. At that, oh my God! Oh, I, I swore that freaking place was going to fall down around us. Yeah, that I'm, that show that was the show that almost didn't happen. Oh, I mean, dude, it, it was the the story. It's actually kind of an interesting story because we got there, and um, the bus had broken down. So our, we were in the parking lot, I think, I forget what happened. There was something with the transmission or an axle. Something was, was not working on the bus. So the driver, we were stuck. We couldn't, we couldn't leave. And the, uh, everything was just wrong that day. The, the stage, there was a big hole in the stage that they covered with, with a rug. And one of our crew guys fell through the hole. And uh, PA problems, everything was just not what we had uh requested in our writer and so we we were gonna just bail but we we couldn't we were stuck <laughs> so that that evening uh we of course we do the meet and greets all these people drove in that that had uh paid for a meet and greet ticket yeah and, and did you uh, do that in the did you do that outside behind the building or did you do that inside we did that in that same room where that oh i'm sorry no it was in the pool room up front yeah. Yeah, where they had the pool table. That's right. That's right. I just showed it. Yes, that's where we did that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but that that was the night that almost didn't happen, and that was yes. the night I met my wife. And yes. So I met Brandy at that show. So you're you're be, this is one of those stories that you and I should really work out and do a choreography a a, a verbal choreography because we could totally just bounce this day this this day and night off of each other <laughs> and you you take this side of it and then i'll start in here and yeah. then you you step yeah. in and 
Because it was crazy. In the meantime, while you guys are broken down and going, what in the hell is going on here? And I'm get I'm on my way from St. Louis to Kansas City, and I pull up on this place and go, this can't be the place. Yeah. This cannot be the place. It, it looks just, like it's going to collapse. Yeah. It was flat. The awning out front, I think, was hanging and drooping. Yeah. And I pull up, I'm like, what is going on? And, I, and there's my friend. She showed, she was there. We said hello. And on the drive over, I told, I told Tim this, Tim and I have discussed this um, before, but I told him, I said, on the way over, I'm like, I bet one of these women is probably, uh, she's like a hair metal fan. She's probably just, just gorgeous, whatever. I just was just thinking about this just because that's what you do when you're going to a, a band that you love in the hair metal days. Yeah. And I'll, I'll be, I'll be doggone. They both were very attractive women. They, they were friends on Facebook of my friend who gave me the ticket. Wow. And, and Brandy, as we, as somebody mentioned in the discussion, they're like, you're like a Breck girl. <laughs> She's like, stop, <laughs> just stop. And I'm like, I get it, but it, it is kind of true. But we yeah, talked and wonderful. I spend a bunch of time talking to her friend because her friend is a guitar player. So, yeah, yeah that's right. Um, yeah. Karen. Yes, and Karen. Karen. Yes. But um, so I, you know, we, we were all isolated on that bus when, when we were there, we weren't inside the building because there was stuff going on behind the scenes that they didn't want us to be a part of. So I'm sitting in the front lounge on the bus at the table and, people started pulling up because it's getting late in the afternoon and Brandy came with, uh, with Marsha, mm -hmm. uh, our friend Marsha. Yep. And that's uh, our friend Marsha. Yeah. Some other folks. And I think you might've been with them. I can't remember, but, uh, I don't know that I was, well, I was as far, but up to the bus, I hadn't, I don't yeah, think so they, they had parked. I'm sitting there at the front table in the, in the bus just kind of staring out the window and this car pulls up and Brandy gets out mm. and I'm like, who the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that was it. I just, I noticed she was very, very attractive. Yes. And, um, <clears throat> kind of left it at that. And then we went in to do the meet and greet later on. Mm -hmm. And she was part of that group that came in with the meet and greet. Yep. And we still didn't know if we were going to play the show or not. We just did the meet and greet for the people that had that had paid That's for those crazy. tickets. And um, she was part of the meet and greet again. And I just kind of, you know, kept my distance. I, <laughs> you know, noticing but not saying anything or. Because we were we were a whole foursome that had walked in together. Because I was there because of Marsha, and then, mm -hmm. and then so we all were in there together. Yeah. So, um, turns out we did the show and, um, and here is some yeah. of the pictures. This is some of the crappy oh, pictures yeah. that I took with my phone. Yeah. That's um, with the, the ceilings that were like 20 feet oh, tall. Right. I mean, <laughs> I didn't God, dare that, to jump up in the air. I would have hit my head. No, <laughs> no. And just, the tiles are drooping. I'm like, Oh my gosh. So you can see once, once the, uh, the, the meet and greet was done. We, it took for freaking ever for us to get into the building. Yeah. And then, um, and then once we did, we found a table straight away. And I, I remember putting my phone down on the table and then, uh, and then Brandy says out loud, she goes, I want to go up front. And I said, do you want to go up front? I said, I'll get you up front. And I put my hand out and she took my hand and I walked her all the way to the front so you can see where we're standing. We're we're just past your microphone spot. Well, yeah, uh, I, and a little I knew exactly where where she was standing. <laughs> yeah. So then I realized I forgot my phone. So I said I'll be right back. Yeah. And I got I know I had to walk through a few people to get back out, but the, I'll be ding dang. They let me right back in as soon as I got back because they're like, oh, dude, you're with her. You're yeah, come on in. You know, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> So we stood there and we were at the show and, and we, we watched the show. I took pictures. It was a blast. We got guitar picks. I made sure that I gave her a couple of guitar picks that I got to, you know, we were yeah. catching picks and I'm handing them to her. 
and uh and we just had a, had a great time it was a great show despite the you know you just forget about it once you're seeing one of your favorite bands you know you're like whatever and I, uh I, w I was making eye contact the whole night <laughs> with her and i'm just like well she, yes at me or, or you know and then uh uh at the at the you know i couldn't i was she's got beautiful eyes oh yeah um uh, i'm like just mesmerized with her eyes and yeah yeah you know, she she came up at the very end of the show and i'm just kind of shaking hands with people and she yeah. she grabbed my hand and I, uh, that was but i mean that was that was it it took it took a while yeah to build well here's a shot you think is it okay if i show a shot of her and i at the show yeah yeah there we are wow. there's brandy wow that's so great picture this is i, I, I thought you guys were an item <laughs> Yes, I was. I was. I. I ended up. Uh, you guys, when you moved, uh, I was helping you with a bunch of the stuff that you had, and so yeah. we. Got, that's when we finally, you and I, had a chance to talk about it. And you're like, yeah. "Well, you know, I didn't know if I wanted to give it because I didn't want to piss you off." I was like, yeah. "What?" I'm yeah. like, "Oh yeah, of course. I'm standing there. You think that? Yeah, I get it." But I thought that was hilarious. I was like, "No, we're not. No, we're not." <laughs> But uh, but that was hanging out after the show, and then we walked over, and she was a little shy about it. She didn't come over. Marsha and I were over talking with uh, with Oz, and right. and then you stepped out, and then we're like, and you were like, "Is that your friend can come over too if she wants?" Yeah, you know. I mean, I don't I don't normally get off the bus after a show, especially mm -hmm. from a little sweaty from like that kind of a gig was just, it was very hot, like a sauna. Yeah. yeah. So, but I knew, I knew she was out there because she had come with Marsha. Yes. <laughs> and I, and Marsha's calling me like, we're, we're going to leave, you know, pretty soon. And so I, I wanted to make sure I went out and said goodbye. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, there, Brandy's like with her friend, Karen standing off, you know, at a distance yes. parking lot. And I said, come really? on over. So we, we took, uh, <laughs> took pictures. I think that was our first picture together. My picture with her is very blurry, but I mean, that oh, was I got the first picture I got <laughs> with her. And, uh, you know, it was like afterwards, uh, I just, man, I just kept thinking about her. And after, after the mm -hmm. show, um, oh, the other thing that, that was interesting was that they just so happened to be staying at the hotel that the band, our bus pulls up and they yeah. was getting off for the night. And I, I normally either stay on the bus or whatever, cause we're going to leave early in the morning, but um, yeah. Yeah. They, they were staying at the hotel just had, and I saw that they were like there in the parking lot. I'm like, Oh my God, she's, she's here. I was like, <laughs> I was like a little kid. I'm like, and, uh, <laughs> I know, I, stayed, I know. I stayed up all night on the bus um, awake because I was like, I wanted to see her the next morning when they were leaving because I knew they were going to check out of the hotel at some point. And yeah, so yeah. And then I felt stupid. I'm like, oh, uh, you know, like my hair sticking out. And, you know, I'm, I, I, I wasn't the rock star anymore. I was just <laughs> some idiot getting off a bus and. <laughs> Uh, I, from rock star to door I didn't make I didn't make any conversation with her or anything. I just kind of you know, <laughs> nice to nice to see you again, you know that kind of. Uh, then, uh, but we we made contact and uh, um, yeah, I I she I don't know it was all through Facebook and and yeah we started yeah. talking and became friends and then you know developed a, a relationship and so yeah you know. yeah yeah and you find out you found out that your belief system too was on was on point and yeah. and kind of you yeah. know where you were yeah you know and that's that's a pretty that's a pretty amazing electric thing i mean i can't you know when it when it happens it happens you know yeah so 
Yeah. Now, that because that was a wonderful time. And like I say, from the ashes, what a what a <laughs> what a night from the ashes. Uh, you almost don't play it. We, you know, uh, uh, the different things that could have gone differently um, mm. is always always a fun point. And then here we are. This was a, a, one of the other shots I think in Peoria, because I think that's where I was wearing yeah. the Fender shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there we are hanging out. That was kind of, that was a neat venue. You know, they changed hands um, afterwards and they call it something else, but it was kind of an interesting venue. It was that big uh, rounded roof venue. It was, it had the I bar up front. I and, don't remember the inside. I remember that backstage area. Yeah. It was kind of a big open area and they had all the mm -hmm. wood paneling. Or, yes. Yeah. Cause they, and then they had like in the middle of it, they had the, you know, your, like the, dressing room or the green room there was like in the middle and, and and like there was two of them actually it's two of those buildings next to each other yeah because one of them is like the hospitality area for the band and whatnot and the bar and then you walk through into the next building and it's the venue where you have the stage at the very front and then you have you know cordoned off sections and all that stuff yeah so it was kind of it was an interesting place it's changed hands though now um it was but, funny because you you mentioned that, and I'm like, I I remember the backstage area. I know it, <laughs> and I, I I normally don't know because where everybody else ends up, you know, the audience. I, I right don't go out there. I I know backstage, and I know hotel rooms, and that's about all I know. <laughs> I've, I've been to a place where I've actually stayed in the same hotel room uh, that I had been in prior, like a year or two prior, and I'm going. I remember this room. I remember the room mm. number. I remember walking down this hall and it's the room and this is the room. I, it's weird stuff, but I, I've stayed in the exact same room at a hotel that I'd been at like two years prior, you know, that yeah. I stayed at. So just weird yeah. stuff like that. And, and sometimes it's, sometimes it's stuff you remember because of good situations. Sometimes it's things you remember because of bad situations. Like I remember being in Europe uh, and uh, being in England, actually, and for a, a Wayward Son show w when they were on tour with Steel Panther, and I was wiped out in in Bristol, and yeah. I, I had a buddy of mine take me to the. He was very nice and helped me get to the hotel and unpack my stuff. But I remember there's doors, there's vending machines that I specifically remember because of how. I'm like, oh dear God, just get me where I need to be. I need, I need to be done, because yeah. that was that was a weird time. But yeah, it's kind of weird how you <laughs> you record things in your head. Yeah. Um, so now here's the thing I've been dying to ask you, and and we'll we we can close up on this after we're after we do this. But, um. Oh well, look at this. Before I do, born distracted says during the against the law years, Tim had the coolest look. Kind of like Clint Eastwood. Go ahead, make my base. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, and that's kind of the the look I was I was trying to go for. It was kind of like a like a gun slinging. I don't know. I had yeah, long brown jacket. I had the like cowboy boots and just and you had the like, beard going too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Beard. Everybody was like growing facial hair. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was the next wave in the hair metal. Put away the, the makeup and grow the facial hair. Grow <laughs> the facial hair. Get a little grungy looking, right? Yeah. 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 So this is what I've been waiting to ask. I've been dying to talk to you about this. Uh, being a classic Aldenova fan, uh, hungry for new material, I completely flipped uh, when you mentioned working with him on the new rock opera, The Life and Times of Eddie Gage. Um, tell me, I, I just got to know, what what led... What led up to that? How'd that happen? Well, I, okay, so I, I'm still not sure if I, I, I played on uh, one song. I'm not sure if it's ever going to mm -hmm. uh, see the light of day or not, but um, yeah. that's, that's something that he had been working on for years. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, what led up to me working with Aldo was uh, Facebook. Um, he saw a picture of me in his newsfeed, you know, that where it has like people you might know or right. Know, right. And, uh, he, it was in his newsfeed 
and he he clicked on it and it turned out I was a bass player and you know he was looking for a bass player and I think it was mainly just on looks um and so uh he he sent me a, a message private message on Facebook said hey this is all the Nova you know uh, would you be interested in playing and I'm like yeah I'm thinking yeah right this is but <laughs> so I, I yeah, I, I looked at it and I said, yeah, I guess, yeah, this is Alda Nova. And so uh, I, I forget how we made conversation. But I said, yeah, you know, what, what's going on? I, you know, I'd, I'd love to play with you. And, and uh, yeah. he, he wanted me to send him demos or you know, stuff of me playing. So I, I sent him some YouTube videos and I sent him my album. And, and so uh, as things came about, he... That was uh, in 2018. Okay. Um, probably around September, October. Um, in January of 2019, he did. Uh, he flew me up to Canada to Montreal to do a, a video mm. for um, uh, one of the songs. Uh, I'm a survivor. <laughs> ah, <laughs> right. Right. Just one second. So, yeah, that's okay. You know, I'm a survivor. Is, is, excellent song and so he had me in the video to i didn't play on it obviously but but um he had me play on the video and i was part wow. of the backing band and and so that we just remained uh talking and we did stuff together since covid we had planned on touring um and then covid kind of shut everything down and shut the okay. down. so uh we started doing uh he started doing uh these videos, COVID, these COVID videos, right? Uh, yeah, redoing songs that yeah uh, he had recorded previously, and and we do it as a live band. Um, so we we record I, right here in my studio. I record the bass tracks, and then uh, he'd have all the other tracks arranged and whatever, and and uh, we'd set up a camera and we we do like these home videos, yeah, with, with a live band, and uh, so uh, wow. He had asked uh, if I'd be interested in playing on a song, and uh, sent me the stuff, and and I, I laid down the tracks, and he's he thought it was great. He he decided wow. he wants to put it on his album, I guess. So, um, wow. but I mean, for the most part, everything that that I had done with Aldo uh, had either been the video or we've been doing these these COVID videos, and yeah. then. Um, I just this year has just been crazy and i wasn't able to commit to doing anything um i, I can't be in quarantine you know right order and, and stuff like that because well kind of give me give me kind of a layout of a schedule that like we we kind of discussed this before but i just want to make sure that you know if you want to mention it like if you were to go up and do like if you went up there to work on something, you would be up there for how long? Maybe two days or? Well, yeah. So if we were going to do some some video work, it would be a couple of days, you know, weekend or whatever. But yeah. I'd have to be in quarantine for ten days to two weeks, um, just because that's the way they're they're rolling right now. Wow. So um, everything that he had planned um, last year, last summer, we had planned on doing a tour. Hmm. Uh, and everything just kind of fell apart because of COVID. So this mm. year, I, I, I just, I don't have the time. Um, there's too much going on within the family that I just, I couldn't make gotcha. the commitment. So gotcha. um, I, I let him know earlier this year that I, I just wouldn't be able to, to continue. Yeah. Like uh, this is uh, one of the photos you have on your website. Yeah. So, so that's, uh, uh, his original drummer, Billy, um, was Aldo, and then uh, Michelle or Michael, they're all French, so oh, uh, yeah, so, yeah. anyways, so that's that was the band that played in the uh, in the video. Wow, so, okay, yeah. and that was this here, right? Here again, yeah, so same shot, big, huge that's stage, cool. um, great lighting, and uh. He, he's yeah. a class act. He he really he goes all out and you know 
nobody's doing videos like that. Everybody's like in a room, you know, and he, he goes out yeah. and does a huge production video, which is awesome. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm eager. I'm, I'm, I've always been eager to talk to him at some point. So maybe I'll have to see if you can yeah, talk to him. We can talk to that. And, and uh, I'd love to, ha I, I'd have you on the show. Yeah. Um, Cause that's what it's all about sharing. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. I mean, I followed him, you know, of course I was, I was in on the first record, you know, 1981, he did the video for fantasy. And then, mm -hmm. you know, when the subject Aldo Nova came out, I was totally in on that. And when blood on the bricks came out, I got a cool single of that from the guy at the record company. Yeah. In the meantime, you know, he had done the song with uh, blue oyster cult and, um, you know, take me away on their uh, the revolution by night and album is such good stuff. So, yeah. but the people he's worked with too is amazing. I mean, if you guys oh God, get out he's... there on, uh, on Tim's website and it's got everything discography, uh, it does say incomplete list on it. So there could be some other things, right? There's other like, things uh, I don't add or I forget or like I'm, gotcha. I'm going through my collection back there and I'm like, oh yeah, I played on that. Like, I, I kind of flipped out when I saw that you played a uh, fretless bass for tourniquet. Yeah. So, on crawl to China. You yeah. did a song on there. So I had been playing in the nineties, uh, pretty much exclusively just fretless bass. And wow. uh, I, I had done something with them. Uh, I can't remember what it was at the, off the top of my head, but they, they had heard me play fretless and uh, uh, Ted had asked if I would be interested in playing uh, like a jazz thing. And, yeah. Uh, kind of like a, like a Sinatra kind of big band kind of. Wow. Kind of bass <laughs> part. And Luke would be, it would just be me and the drums and then Luke would be singing uh, over the, the bass track. So I did and, wow. and, and recorded it and uh, came out pretty cool. Yeah. Then it, goes into, it goes from jazz bass into this heavy, heavy uh, metal kind of riff after that. So it's kind of like yeah. a of jazz and then it goes into heavy metal. I'll have to check. I got to check that out. Um, yeah, there's everything on here. I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of stuff. The, the Sin Dizzy stuff that you did with Oz, mm -hmm. the um irene kelly deborah vaughn all the way to liberty and justice stuff that you worked yeah. with um des dickerson but yeah get out there on tim's website and uh and check some of these out uh and then it's got all your video stuff too a, a, a good listing of all your video stuff yeah oh look at that yeah so you did so here let's let's kind of finish this aldo nova thought uh you were on the video for i'm a survivor uh there's monkey on your back love yeah, that so from these subject are, yeah these are all the covid versions that, that yeah done. uh when all is said and done mm -hmm. blood on the bricks which is a great song co-written by john bon jovi right, right. Yeah. uh and modern world so yeah, yeah. that's that's i rehearsed cool. i rehearsed <laughs> it drives me nuts because it would have been a great tour i i was all excited i rehearsed and practiced oh, he, he sent us Everybody sent like the whole concert. He is very meticulous as far as everything is arranged. I mean, he had the whole show already in his mind and arranged how each song is going to be transitioned into the next. And yeah, well, I'm rehearsing the whole set, you know, on all these songs, and it's like, ah, dang, it just didn't happen. Ah. It didn't happen. So that's a heartbreaker, man. Maybe that is a maybe one day in the future. You know, if, yeah. if the opportunity uh, happens again, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Because I'd, I'd certainly love, I'd, I'd love to have some new Aldo material. I would. Yeah. Well, it, it, the, the uh, Life and Times of Eddie Gage is pretty darn cool. It's. Yeah. And is it available? I mean. You know, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's, uh, I mean, but. You know, last I heard, he was going to release it um, either the end of last year or maybe sometime this year. I, but I don't, I don't know. It's 
Yeah, because there's there's a cover art and everything out there whenever you see some of the videos and stuff like that. So, you know, but uh, that would be cool. Um, well, brother, I think I'll let you get going at that. I'm going to double check this, though. We did have the last, uh, last few things coming in. Uh, hello from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Rag Rocks. Good to yeah. see you. The true fans, yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah, yeah. I, I love Puerto Rico too. I miss you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Any memories from the Wild Striper concerts in the '80s in Puerto Rico? I was there. Yeah, the first one at uh, the uh, the baseball, the San uh, San Ramon, uh, the the big baseball stadium was. Uh huh. It's like they, I guess, like the week before they had had a hur hurricane come through. Oh. And so we were like going, are we going to be able to play? And, and so we're, it was up in the air. But we got there, and this place, this baseball stadium was packed out with people. It was like wow. huge. I mean, thousands. Everywhere you look, there's thousands. Wow. Of people. You know, they're building humid pyramids. And just <laughs> it's like my first time in Puerto Rico, and these people are just nuts. They're crazy. <laughs> they're uh, oh, man. Is there... Uh, is there something that you're a collector of that's not music related? Well, I know the one thing we didn't talk about was the workout that I got helping you move into the truck. Oh, the radio? To go. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I collect old radios, antique radios. I, I'm a ham radio operator, so I, I, I'm just a geek. Yeah. I'm not a geek, but I, I collect old uh, radios and I collect books, antique books. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And, you know, and albums. Go ahead. Go ahead. And what do you get? Albums. I collect albums and just whatever. Yeah. I go through phases yeah. where I, you know, I'm into certain things and then I put yeah. them in a box and start with the next. But um, I know how that is. I think a lot of us know how that is. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, but Christine picked up some when we were in Evanston recently by Chicago there. Um, we were, went into a, a store that has vinyl, DVDs, books, all kinds of stuff. So um, this is kind of a, a playground for me. I was loving it. But uh, she found some classic old books, you know, like Wizard of Oz, sure. you know, and some of these are early printings and stuff like that. So, um, so that stands for that. And then also we went to some other record stores and uh, my son made me proud the other day. He just picked up uh, Queen Night at the Opera. So yeah. I said, well, you've got a better copy than I do because mine is like a Mexican reprint that I bought cheap. You know, I didn't buy oh, it yeah. when it first came out, but I bought it. I mean, my copy is 30 years old or more, you know, more, whatever. And uh, but it's not as good as his. <laughs> well, that's like and, some Beatle albums I have that were like made by like KTEL, not KTEL, but like a, a, a label called Pickwick. Yeah. Uh, I've got, I've got albums in my collection that are just like on weird labels. And you know, mm -hmm. I got Beatle 45s on, on Swan and Atco and, and uh, wow. cool things like that. So I, I like to collect albums. I like old books, uh, really just old uh, uh, biblical kind of commentary. I collect old Bibles from, uh, uh, Civil War era. Yeah, uh, I've I've got um, uh, Torah scrolls from from uh, fragments from uh, the mid uh, you know, 14, 1500s. Uh, just wow. interesting things that nobody really cares about but me. <laughs> 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 I, mean, I, I, I like old books and and <laughs> I like to read. Like some of the I got. Uh, Pull something like this off the shelf. This is like Cambridge Bible comic. Oh. See it. This wow. is from 18, 1895 or somewhere in there. And it's got the original owner's name stamped on oh, so it. Wow. Like, when I when I get these things and, and I think it, you know, some of these guys, most of these guys on, on these old books are are old pastors. Um usually they're from England. So this one's yeah. from 1880, 1887. But you see their handwritten notes from when they were going through wow. uh, seminary and, and seminary, yeah. And I'm just like, man, these guys are already, you know, long gone. And their their great great grandkids are probably 
you know, still alive, but you know, stuff like this, I got, I've got all wow. this stuff. Um, I, I just find it fascinating. And I think I got that from my dad because my dad collected, he had a huge library and he collected, yeah. uh, old books and, and, uh, fossils and just all kinds of weird stuff like that. Wow. And it's, it's something that is, uh, of a time that is, um, hmm, everything that we do now, I mean, is bore from that time, yep. you know, so I always say, what's going on with the English language right now? I mean, what's happening with grammar? What's happening with punctuations that don't exist anymore just because people don't do them or yeah. I'm reading yeah. something. I'm like, oh, well, that I mean, <laughs> oh, LOL, oh like my God. A whole, a whole new language with, oh. about, with texting. Yeah, that's one of my least favorites. Uh, people do it and I don't get on them about it, but it is a huge pet peeve of mine. And I'll tell you why. I was getting ready to do a gig and we needed a replacement guitar player. The guitar player that the front man came up with didn't even end up doing the gig, but he put in a message to the band. He goes, well, I work here and I do this and I don't, I'm not even sure if I have the day off, LOL. Yeah. I'm like, this, this isn't a yeah. joke. It's not funny. <laughs> this isn't funny. I don't know what you're laughing about, but uh, I know where you can put that. Yeah. Uh, and a big thank you. Wow, this is all. Uh, all oh. I see is Chihuahua. <laughs> Chihuahua is Chihuahua. But I get thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Gracias. There you go. For sharing Thanks, your Timothy, for sharing essence. Awesome. That's I awesome. Hope to be there someday again. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, my mom went to South America. I never did. Um, somebody uh, just mentioned too, oddly enough, I think it's so interesting when, when our guests over there chime in about something that is my last question, actually. And I was actually going to ask you about a book. I mean, do you ever read other musician books, bios yeah, and stuff? I, 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 do you? The other half of my room is, is uh, all uh, autobiographies. That That's Cool. Everybody from you know the Stones, Keith Richards to yeah, um, I don't know, you name it. Chuck Sinatra, Negron, Chuck Negron from Three Dog Night. Yep, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's just you know. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I've got a whole. I got kind of a collection that's over here. I just got the Bruce Dickinson one. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm eager to rate uh, one that you might really in, uh, enjoy. I don't know if you know of this one, The Speed of Sound by Thomas Dolby. Mm -mm. You you might get a kick out of that being an electronics kind of a guy, you know, yeah. of course, because uh, he really pioneered a lot of really interesting electronics uh, and stuff and spent uh, spent some time with Eddie Van Halen. That's one of my favorite yeah. posts that came out after Eddie died was, his time that he spent, the five things he remembers from his weekend with Eddie Van Halen. Wow. Very um, cool. Yeah, and I got the Scott Ian book recently, and of course the KK Downing book came out recently, and I got that. And uh, yeah. but I've got a, you know, I've got a bunch of stuff to read, everything from Goldie Hawn to Rob Halford, you know. Yeah, Shirley but, Jones. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I just read that one not too long ago. Uh, yes. Taylor, I was born in I, uh, I, I still have a bunch that I, so when, uh, borders borders was going out of business, they yeah. had, we pulled in somewhere. I can't remember somewhere in the Midwest and there was a borders books and music going out of business and they had all their biographies on sale for like a dollar. So dollar shut even. up. I loaded up a suitcase oh. just full of books and, brought them home <laughs> so so did they have that behind the counter sir will you would you like a bag or a suitcase <laughs> yeah no, I, we had the bus because we pull into a town and we're right, like, we're right. Do oh let's go to a mall so it's like we we get off the bus and do some shopping and but i happen to have a suitcase right there so i loaded that's it hilarious there. yeah that is hilarious a suit a suitcase of lives right yeah yeah <laughs> so are you working on one yourself I had been. Um, yeah. I, I think I'm going to just kind of put it on hold mm -hmm. and I may rewrite. I, I don't want to 
was all said and done, I, I just kind of, it left me with a bad taste in my mouth. Of, Interesting. I, I don't want to portray my life as an angry person. And so I just, hmm. you know, I've moved yeah. beyond that. And, you know, I don't think that my life's that important anymore, you know, to, to write about. So it's like, I might, again, I, I may put it in production number two and yeah. see if I can get something else. I I know that uh, I don't remember who it was I was reading about recently, but somebody had been doing some reflecting on the book that they had done. Yeah. And they were like, I really, I really didn't need to do all of that. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I, I want to represent Christ and I don't want to represent in the wrong way. And I think a lot of what I had put into it would have been a reflection on where I was maybe five years ago. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, you, you put that out there and it's going to be out there forever. Yeah. yeah and not only that, it's internet, tough, you know, put stuff on the internet. It's there forever. You know, right. You can't change. Right. And it's tough when you're trying to, um, to please everybody. That's always a hard thing to do, but you know, some people are looking for this. Some people are looking for that. Somebody could watch the top. Here's, here's an, here's my example. Somebody could be watching that Tom Petty movie that was, that, that came out about his life and you could watch it and go, what an amazing, what an amazing movie. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, yeah, but because of one little thing, I'll look at it and go, yeah, I don't know. It was okay. I mean, they didn't talk at all about FM. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and I realize it's probably because he had a lot of legal issues with the MCA and with the company and all that stuff. So there was lots of bad blood flowing during those times. And when you get so many years, decades past it, and you're like, I don't even want to talk about it, you know, but at the same time, I'm that geek. I'm that person out there dying to hear about that one facet yeah. of their life that affected me yeah. and they gloss right over it and don't even mention it. Yeah. Cause you're, you're already, it's like that. It's like that part of the trip. Oh, we always stop there. We always get something to eat there. Not this time. And you're like, well, now it's not even like the real trip. Yeah. You're like, I, I was already, cause here comes the year. Here it comes, here it comes. And you didn't even talk about it. Okay. So, yeah. So, you know, I, it's, I, I, I just, I probably, I mean, it's all, a lot of it's written down and pretty much ready to go. It's just, mm -hmm. do I want to. How you want to present it, right? Yeah. I mean, how's it going to make me look? I won't be around forever. Right. But that book might be later on and people are. Right. Yeah, it's, I, I don't want to lead people to believe um, things that I, how I was. Right. Represented as being negative. So, well, yeah, so nobody wants a book. <laughs> yeah. And so many people are revising their books. I mean, they're, you know, yeah. they're coming out with a new version of it and things. And, and Born Distracted, you're right. I, I should write my own book. I, I thought about it at one point. You know, I think if I ever wrote a book about my life and the things I've been through, I'd probably just make it a, a piece of fiction that would be like real fiction. It'd be auto. Can you do that? Autobiographical fiction? Can awesome. you do that? Well, you can do anything. So, yeah, because I mean, I don't know. I, I've, I've you done some, do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, I've had some crazy adventures. Well, you would be in the book. So, you know. And then the lastly here, what new musical projects are you thinking about in the next years? Anything right off the bat now? Or has you got plenty of other things in the midst? What am I thinking? I, Josh. I was looking for anything to happen. I mean, they're just barely opening. Yeah. I, I don't think a lot of people realize the toll that COVID took on the, the entertainment music industry in general. I mean, as not just bands off the road, but I mean, there's nothing going yeah. on. So, I mean, and that's not just bands, but it's like the crew guys, people yeah. in the theaters or, you know, stage yeah. hands. I mean, everybody has been devastated by being off yeah. the road. And yeah, so I mean, there's a few bands that are finally getting out, and you know, Lollapalooza, just mm -hmm. you know, so we're we're starting to see it open up again. 
Yeah. And so I don't have a band right now. I'm, I'm, I'm looking to do something or I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what the future holds. I, I can't really <laughs> say what I'm going to do next week. So, <laughs> well, maybe that's where, maybe that's where I need to start. Maybe hammer away needs to branch out into putting people together, you know, yeah, yeah I'm, instead of everybody you know, I, wondering what they're going to do, just go, you know what you and you and you and you. I'm at, Let's, I'm at the point where I, I just, I want to play something for me, mm -hmm. music that I like, mm -hmm. as opposed to rehashing eighties. Um, right. You know, it's like, 80s were great, but you know, this is 2021. This is yeah, they have their place 40, 40 years later. And mm -hmm. um, I want to play something that I like, and yeah, whatever that is. I don't know because it changes all the time. And I, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, I think there's a lot of people out there that uh, are making some great music that uh, is good and influenced by certain genres and certain places and time. Yeah. You know, um, I get a lot of stuff. Okay. So what I do on the side here to actually try to make money, um, through all this is, is record. I, I lay down bass tracks for people's demos or albums or whatever. Yeah. That's what I do. And I turn down some stuff because everybody thinks I'm a heavy metal guy. And it's like, I get this hardcore metal. It's like, I, I'm not, I'll play on it, but I mean, I'm, probably not the guy to play heavy metal or hardcore stuff. You know, right. I, I, I grew up playing jazz. I mean, I, it's I not as influence of right. uh, different styles of music. I grew up on, on sixties and seventies pop music, you know, so I wasn't really the, the metal guy. Um, I, I play hard rock. I, I'm a rock bass player, but yeah. Um, I think a lot of people yeah. think that because Striper is somewhat heavy metal, I mean, there's some hard rock stuff. I don't, I don't think Striper is a metal band at all. I think it's a good rock band, hard rock at times and some, some good ballads. And, uh, yeah. but I wasn't, I wasn't really the metal guy. Interesting. I, I liked other styles of music. Yeah. <laughs> And they're fun well, to play. I mean, as a bass player, it's not, you know, if you're just laying down, uh, doubling up on the, the rhythm guitar tracks, it's like, that's kind of boring. Right. I'm more of a melodic player. I like to play different things. Um, I like to, you know, playing with, <clears throat> excuse me, playing with an acoustic guitar player is, is so much different for a bass player than, than playing electric, you know, where you're just, yep. um, Anyway, so that's yeah. that's kind of where I'm at. I, I I really don't know what the future holds. You know, if I you know at my age, I'm getting up there. <laughs> I'll be sixty next year, so it's like, uh, you know, what do you I don't want to, I don't want to reinvent myself. Uh, I don't know what the industry is going to do. I don't know. There, there's so much uncertainty right now with what's going on yeah. in the world that it's it's really hard to say, but. You know, yeah. I'm, I've also been one to, to trust God that he's going to lead me in whatever direction yeah. and yeah. wherever that ends up, you know, I'm, it's in God's will. I'm, I'm there. Yeah. Well, if there's the one word that I've, that I've always thrown out to people and I, I've said it on the show before is that, uh, is that word contentment. Mm -hmm. If we can just, if we find a place of contentment, things tend to just drift in like a nice wave it just seems to you know to come in it's not a crashing crushing wave it's just this nice even lapping of the water to, to when you need an opportunity here it comes if you if you stay content and and where you are uh, i was trying to tell my students that during the pandemic you know when they were at home and complaining about having to look at a, a computer screen yeah. i said well yeah. Find contentment because you'll be crabbing and moaning when you're back in school. So yeah. <laughs> enjoy it while you can. Just be content where you are and know that it's pretty nice to be home. You know, 
So, but, uh, but yeah, <laughs> what's this last one? You could play bass while nature sounds playing in the background. It's a thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I live, I live right up against, I'm, I'm in the desert, obviously at Phoenix, but I'm yes. against a, a nature park area. So, it's Oh, like, I got you like I've a reserve got, area. Yeah. I've got mountains all around me and <sighs> you know, at night you hear, you know, there's coyotes and, the birds, you hear all the different wow. wild birds. We got quail running around in the daytime, and it's just it's wow. pretty neat. You could you could have an album called Quailings, and you could Quailings. Say, get, <laughs> get or even or at least a track a track called Quailings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh to, man. To uh, Christopher Cross's sailings. Yes. <laughs> 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 someday when we're hanging out uh i'll tell you about that song that was it's an embarrassing moment about that song only to me it's just silly anyway right well hey thank you very much for everything that we've gotten to share tonight i mean it awesome. you know I'm glad to uh, glad to hang out for a little bit here it's pretty cool. yeah yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. I love it. I love it. Uh, so thank you for sharing all that stuff for the reflections and everything. Thank you to everybody who's been chiming in over there yeah. tonight. Guys. That's it's brilliant good. to have uh, great good things good. to say. Well, the guy says, uh, born distracted. How about a picture book? That's, that's another. That idea. would be my, yes, that would be my that life book. My, one of my uh, hobbies was photography. And I've got over the years, in fact, I was just thinking about that yesterday. I'm going, what if I... Huh? like a picture book but I don't yeah know. yeah like uh uh like neil's lowe's hours doing the, uh he's been uh yeah. he's working on multiple versions of different books like that yeah and uh and i mean i was just talking to him the other day did you ever work with neil did you ever oh, meet yeah. up with him yeah, yeah. We, he's done a lot of stuff with striper back in the day so that's cool that's cool. Quite a uh, quite, <laughs> quite a character he is. He's got that new movie that's uh, it's uh, well, it's not new anymore. Two thousand eighteen, but you can watch it on uh, on YouTube. They've got it out there in your face. In your face. And uh, the Neil's oh, Lowe's Hours story. I'll check it out. Yeah. Yeah, do do. It's a, it's a lot of fun. It's a hoot. I talked to him. I hopefully he's going to be on the show uh, a little later this year. So. Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. We had a good talk, so it's kind of fun. Well, um, thanks again to everybody. Everybody's saying thank you over here and peace. And it's it's wonderful. Thanks for sharing your faith too. Appreciate those words as well. Um, and, uh, and then we will be talking sometime soon to everybody else. Remember when you walk out your door every day, you're in everybody else's world. They're not in yours. So just be cool to each other and, uh, and know the boundaries, man. Work together. Make the day good for that person who's next to you. Because uh, if you make that neighbor's day, it's awesome. Uh, in the meantime, keep rocking. Foo Fighters are in town tonight. Uh, what's my show next week? Next week, we have the Midnight Devils. Um, they're out of the Midwest area here, a little farther north. And uh, and they'll be rocking us then. And then after that, we've got the Great Affairs. So uh, they'll be the next Tuesday. So So enjoy it. Thank you again, Tim. This has been a blast. Thank you. All right, Stu. Take it easy, folks. Right, Rocket.